hi and welcome to this video uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a simple peeling effect in Houdini using the volume solver so let me just play the flip book as you can see this is very thin layer of cloth on top of the face and we, we are going to use the groups to control which part is converting to cloth and also how to set up the edge fracture and the sh this kind of fracturing or shattering you can see here so let's quickly jump into Houdini I'm going to show you how to do the setup okay uh, first uh, here as you can see I just imported the geometry and um, you can download this model from the 3d scan so let me just show you here as you can see here is a 3d scan.com there is very nice high resolution scan 3d models so you can download and use for a test or personal project so this is here it is a website so i just download the model and just did a quick poly reduce because it was very high res and just load it again just cache it using the file cache and just load it from the disk again as you can see this is now poly reduced using the poly reduce node poly reduce i use this one <coughs> and and after that i just use the edge fracture to have a nice pieces for fracturing and if i turn on the pieces you can see here is the fracture of pieces so here is the initial uh, number and how many of fractures you want you can just specify here I just did 300 and after that you need to convert it to cloth so I just use the long class uh, constraint if I come here uh, this is the node I used the long cloth and I didn't change everything this is just the default settings um, and after that I just use the volume constraint again and type is the points and also you have here volume well points this one and this is exactly the same note so I just only turn on the breaking here and the threshold so here is the different type for breaking the fractured edges so if you reach the this threshold above this threshold is going to the the constraint is going to remove between the each pieces so this is by a stretch a stress you have other options like bend if you want to remove the or break the constraint using the bend the stress you can use bend the stress or maybe even distance so you you can just play around uh, with what setting you like more and after that I just output here the constraint so this is just the constraint and this is the the groups I just animated from the top to bottom if I just change the size so I just uh, the group type is a point and also for the group name I just dollar OS as you can see so it uses this name uh, to seen as a group name and I just keyframe the size as you can see I just keep in bound and region and change that to bound and sphere and now you can see it's going to group the points inside the sphere mm, after that I just set the attributes I want to the animation and also the mass so it's only affect the points which is not in not inside this group so if you check here the group is not to seem so it means if you are here this points is not affected by the attributes here only the points outside the group is going to affect so that's it so we need that to because 
the villain cannot update or read the attributes from here imagine if you keyframe attribute here villain don't use that so you need to update the attributes inside the simulation so that's why we have to create this setup and change the attribute here in attribute Django and also here run over its points because because in Willem Solver we dealing with just only points that's why it's very fast so yeah so this is just the geometry I use this one for geometry I just use another null just name the out attribute so the rest is in just in dot network I'm not going to show you how to do it. Let me just jump to frame one. As you can see, uh, the setup is not uh, very complicated. And here we just I just use the Willem object. I didn't change anything in here, so just the default. And multi solver. The reason we are using the multi solver because uh, we are going to update the attributes for each frame and read it from the subs so that's why we are using the sub solver and here is just the vellum source i just the sub path is uh, point to out geometry and the constraint also point to out constraint so this is this is the constraint and this is the geometry so as you can see this is this one is only constraint between each points. So now let's jump into the sub solver because everything is happening here. And yeah, here we have a dot geometry. It's dot geometry actually is pointing to this Willem object. So this is how he knows to up which geometry you want to update. So if this one is the object. As you can see here connected to this one and here it's going to import the geometry I just use the attribute Django and also object merge so I just imported the attribute the no attribute from here this one also you can import this one I just wanted to be a little bit more specific so I just use out attribute so yeah you just import no so and here this is the attribute triangle again run over points no groups but here I'm going to read this attribute from uh, the second input and apply it to the, the geometry job dot, uh, dot geometry so very simple here is uh, just pin to animation this is the attribute we already specified here also in attribute triangle pin to animation is type integer is equals to one and also mass is equal to zero so the, the mass equal to zero means when the mass is zero no force is going to affect your simulation and is basically is going to just ignore the points if you want to have a good simulation you need to add a, at, at least to have a little bit of mass but uh, we don't want this pieces outside uh, the points outside the group uh, here to move that's why we are going to assign it mass zero so if I jump to the simulation again we are going to read from input one and assign it to that left input the input zero and also the mass we will read from here assign it to the dot geometry and that's it and also I just added a little bit of wind pop wind so and keyframe the, the turbulence and also the wind velocity and yeah so if I turn off the simulation you can just see the attributes is just two for example for amplitude and then here is going to zero so basically that's it for the force and the reason we are using the the pop wind, as you know, in Willem Solver is just actually is like particle simulation, so it just uses the points. So you can use all the pop forces. If I any force you have here, uh, like axis force or any, or even care force, you can just use everything from the pop and affect your Willem simulation. Now, if I 
play. As you can see, the, the points inside the group is going to turn to cloth. The geometry is very high risk, that's why it's a little bit uh, slow. And also I have to, to tell I, I didn't change anything in the Volant Solver. It's just the only constant iteration from 100, I changed it to 20. That's it. And yeah, here you can see simulation start from the top to bottom. And if I al I already cached the simulation, so I just use the DOP import. Here it is the DOP the book one and object uh, is the volume. So actually I imported this one. I just use the white card here, as you can see, star vel star. This mean everything that has a volume like this one just imported. And here I cache the simulation. Let me turn off. And now you can see here is the result of the simulation. So the rest is uh, I just use the vellum post process if you want to add a little bit of smoothing on top. So here, or maybe you want to add a little bit of thickness. So you can just use extrude by thickness and change here the parameter. Let me do like three. So you can see now we have thickness. I'm going to turn it off for now. And the rest is for just visualization and the color in the viewport. I just use the attribute angle. I just created an ad attribute called the speed. And it's the length of the ve velocity. That's it. So it gives me a, a speed here, as you can see, huge point. Now, and I just assign the speed to the alpha, so I, we can see here. When the speed is zero, we can it's black, and when is we have a value above zero, we can see the geometry. So I'm just remap between zero and one, and also here is the color and the attribute is speed, and just change the color and the ramp from the attribute. So, as you can see, it's very fast, and the result is very nice. You imagine you can do a lot of stuff and create a lot of effects with just this set, this setup. So this is just the basic to show you how to you can control your volume simulation. And I just merged with the actual just geometry. I just did a color here also and just merge it. That's that's the yeah. Basically that's it. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks.